Well, welcome to another episode of the Notch 6 online radio show. We're going to start this episode a little differently than we normally do, or we'll get to the normal start of the episode in just a second. The episode that you're about to hear was actually recorded on the last day of the LCCA convention on Saturday. And the reason we're delaying this episode until the middle of August is twofold. Number one, we actually ran out of storage space on our server. That's what happens when you create a week of amazing content that ends up filling up your server space. So our server space didn't roll over till the beginning of August. So number one, we couldn't have even posted this episode if we wanted to. Number two is that we wanted to give folks a little bit of time to digest the merger information about the LCCA and the LRRC. And you'll hear more from Al Colas about that in this episode. Uh, We just wanted to give some time for that information to get out there to settle a little bit. Uh, Lionel and the LCCA are currently reaching out to members of both groups and uh, sending them a welcome package, and that should be arriving any day now if you're listening to this episode in the middle of August. So anyway, what I need you to do for me as a listener is uh, let's use a little bit of imagination, let's step in our Wayback Machine, and let's head back to the last day of the LCCA convention. We've got a great episode for you. It's all ahead on Notch 6. The following is a production of Notch 6 Media. It's the Notch 6 online podcast, episode number 41. It's the final night of the LCCA National Convention, and we're going to wrap this thing up in style. Al Colas, Angela Trotta-Thomas, Mike Phillips from Lionel, all on deck. It's the final night. We're going out with a bang. It's all ahead on this episode of Notch 6. This is the Notch 6 online podcast. Notch 6 is the podcast dedicated to O-Gauge trains. Whether you're collecting, operating, or just getting started, Notch 6 is your home for O-Gauge news, events, and interviews. Now here is your host, Derek Thomas. Welcome back to the Notch 6 online podcast or radio show, depending on what you want to call it. At this point in the week, we don't care. We just want to sleep because we are absolutely exhausted. Welcome back to the show for the final time, at least for a little while, Al Colas, and we also have a special guest alongside of us, Angela Trotta-Thomas. Welcome both of you. So glad to have you on the show. Thank you, Derek. Thank you so much. We're glad to be here. I'm just happy to see you, Angela, considering it's not December and cold. It's good to see you guys during the middle of the summer, Al. What a great week it's been. I mean, it was a great day yesterday. Um, so much going on. Kind of give us a recap of, of what happened last night, this morning, and, and what's ahead of us tonight. Uh, yes, and the highlight for me was uh, yesterday we had our newest member join the LCCA. Uh, Henry Thomas, 11 weeks old, was given a, a complimentary membership to the LCCA. So when he grows up, he's going to continue on and carry on the legacy of the LCCA. Oh, thank you so much. That that really, uh, you you completely surprised me out of blue yesterday and meant the world to me. And uh, you know, Henry Henry will be on the show as he grows up. And uh, I, I'm not sure people want to listen to him babble at this point, although he does a very nice job of it. But uh, we'll we'll get there. So thank you so much for for that yesterday. That means the world to me. Like I said, it's been it's been a great couple of days. Um, this morning, trading halls have been open. Had a nice brisk response in the trading hall this morning. We had train drag racing this afternoon. All right, we're gonna get we're gonna get two quick recaps. Number one, tell me how the track planning or the track layout competition <laughs> no, finished we, we out. No, we weren't gonna bring that up, Derek. Oh no, oh no, we're gonna bring that up. We got to bring that up. Well, we hyped it all week, so we might as well hear how it went down. And then let's hear about the drag racing real quick before we get down to business. Does the word humiliation mean anything to you? <laughs> well, we had a, a track um, building contest yesterday between Team Lionel and uh, Team LCCA. And we were having fun with it. We were hyping it up all week long, and uh, we were trounced. We were just (laughs) thoroughly trounced. It wasn't even close. I think next year we need to get our junior members to uh, represent the LCCA. But uh, it was a situation where I think there were some technical matters that were uh, unfair. Um, (laughs) We had some other members that tried to finish the layout after we didn't finish it, and it took them an hour and five minutes to do it and the plan was not accurate. So I'm asking for maybe a re- rematch next year if Lionel will give us a chance. We might need to have some children 
represent the team LCCA, but we definitely want to do it again if Lionel's willing to take us on. <laughs> Why is it that every time we have this contest, somehow the LCCA, there were technical difficulties or a disadvantage? Or, you, you guys are just always behind the eight ball, aren't you? Best of seven. Best of seven. Come on. <laughs> this series will wrap up in the year 2019. <laughs> and I'd like to go back to yesterday. Um, we have our Lionel seminar. As you know, Derek, Lionel comes in, supports our club. It's been phenomenal. They came in and they just made a presentation that just wowed our membership. It was a great. It was exciting. Yes. It was innovative. It was uh, had a had a, a theme with the the NASCAR race that's here, which is a special event for us tomorrow. Uh, so it was just a great tie-in, and uh, they started off with uh, a video of some old Lionel commercials. And that, that transitioned into a, a racing competition theme. Each one of the, the Lionel team members was a uh, was representing a, a team ra a racing team. So it had a NASCAR theme to it. And then at the end, <laughs> the outtakes were hilarious. Uh, Mike Reagan and, and, and the whole team. It was just a lot of fun. It was very informative. Uh, our members just just fed off of it. It was very exciting and just a lot of genuine fun. Yeah, it was a good day yesterday, and, and like I said, uh, the Notch 6 listeners have already gotten a chance to hear the news that Lionel broke. Um, let's talk about let's talk about the 45th anniversary first, because I want to get Angela to jump in here before, because you and I are going to talk for a long time today, so I want to get Angela and get her thoughts on, on what's going on here real quick. Tell me a little bit, you know, switching gears as we start looking ahead to next year, and, and I, I can't believe we're wrapping up the 44th annual convention. It's been such a quick week. Good now we start. Place. Now we start talking about next year. This one isn't even over, and already we're looking ahead to Boston. Uh, Angela is doing something really, really cool for the club. You want to kind of lead us in on what's going on? Well, well, first of all, we're very fortunate that Angela and her husband Bob are LCCA members, and yes. they've been longtime supporters of the club. So we can't thank them enough for all the things that they've done for us through the years. Um, great, great people. Um, we are celebrating our 45th anniversary starting at the end of this convention. And uh, our club was founded in 1970 by a gentleman named Jim Gates in Des Moines, Iowa. So we're gonna we're planning a year long celebration. Uh, it's not too many organizations that uh, last that long or survive that long. And we're an all volunteer organization, so you know there's been some downs, ups and downs, and and we're here. And I think we're stronger than ever. I think that the announcement yesterday by Howard was just, and we'll talk more about that yeah, later. Yeah, absolutely. But um, so part of our 45th anniversary celebration, we're gonna have our convention in Boston. So what we've been doing is we met up with Angela and we made arrangements where we commissioned a painting from her. And it's an original painting and you'll tell me more about the, to um, yeah. the topic, but the idea is we're going to have a year, year long selling of a raffle ticket. So every LCCA member who purchases a ticket will have an opportunity to win it. It's not going to be, you know, isolated to a handful of people who can maybe afford like a, an auction type arrangement. This is every member has has a, a chance. And if you want to increase your probability, you have just buy more tickets. We're going to be selling them at special events. We're, when we're uh, September, I mean October 11th, when we're having our uh, 45th anniversary celebration with Dick Kuhn in in Dearborn. And I believe Angela, you're planning to be there as well. I am. Yeah. Angela, I'm going to have you two switch seats here for a second and, and get Angela next to the mic, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this painting and find out what's new in your world uh, since December. Okay. So so tell me a little bit about this painting. Tell me about the theming, uh, the thought that went into it, and, and kind of what this thing looks like. Well, Al, Dennis, and I spoke at length um, probably about six months ago about this whole concept and decided that we wanted to carry the uh cover of the 1954 catalog theme with the painting. Um, so what I did is I created, it looks just like the cover of the 1954 catalog except instead of Lionel, it's the lettering is LCCA, 45 years of fun. And uh, the engines that are featured at the bottom of the painting are actually LCCA, LCCA. limited edition Lionel products. Okay. So basically, uh, it's it, it's it has the feel and flavor of, of your immediate look is the '54 catalog, but it's definitely been designed with um, LCCA in mind, and it's going to be um, it's going to be a raffle, which I'm delighted about because it does give everyone a chance sure. to own the original painting. Uh, it's a good size painting. I think it's uh, 20 by 30, mm -hmm. done in oil. Okay. 
and um, got a, a phenomenal response. Yeah, here I, at the show. it's a very bright painting. I mean, if anybody's ever seen, well, I should. Most people have seen the '54 catalog cover, and it's a bright cover. And this is a bright painting, and it looks really, really phenomenal. And I like that this is how you guys are choosing to do it is is do it raffle style in that way. You know. Uh, Owning an original piece of your artwork is a big deal. It, it really is. is. It, it, it is be, because they're more obviously much more costly than the than the prints. So um, that's why I do so many prints, and I am actually releasing only forty five prints of this catalog. I mean, of this uh, LCCA painting, mm -hmm. I'm only I'm releasing forty five prints so that uh, it, it does give people a chance to have this commemorative painting. And they can still buy, obviously, the raffle tickets, and hopefully, they'll, you know, they have a good chance of winning. But if not, they'll still be able to have something special with this uh, image on it. And the, the prints are smaller than the original, but I'm just doing 45 prints. Okay. And do we know, uh, these prints are, are here at the show, do we know yet if the prints are going to be available through the LCCA website? Do they need to call you? Who do they need to talk to if you're interested in one of the 45? Probably the best way to get in touch with uh, it would be to get in touch with me. Sounds to, good. If you're interested in one of these prints, it uh, you can go onto my website, okay. which is which is just www.angelatradathomas.com. Great. Or um, email me, which is all that information's on the website. So. Yep. Uh, I'd be happy to take to take care of it directly. Well, with them. only forty five prints, I have a feeling these are going to go fast. And uh, this well, is a sold, short I've painting. Sold, I've sold quite a few of them already here. So, so, so now we're at less than forty five. <laughs> so, if you're listening to this and it's uh, relatively soon after the convention, you want to hop on that because these these are going to go quick. So, what else is going on in your world right now? Uh, I've seen I've seen some uh, items that you have uh, your own layout coming out from Dunham Studios. Can you tell me a little bit about that and how you two partnered together on that? We won't spend a ton of time, but I just want to hear what's going on in your world. Sure, uh, Clark and I spoke about a year ago about about this concept. Uh, he um, actually I painted the painting for the background of the layout, and then I actually painted another painting that that featured the buildings of the layout and he with his magic put that all together and made a beautiful layout that is now available for sale um, it has the obviously the background artwork mm -hmm. but the, but all the buildings on the layout are done three-dimensionally that look just like the buildings that are, are painted in the painting. So I'm delighted and excited about it. Yeah, it's a, it's a really neat layout. And if, if you have, if you are the ultimate Angela Trotta Thomas collector, you need to, to get one of these layouts because it's, it's taking one of her paintings and it's bringing it to life in its own toy train setting. And they, it's just, it's a really cool layout. So I encourage you to uh, check out the Dunham Studios website if you want more information on that layout. Anything else going on that is new, unusual, interesting in your world? Well, I'm creating some new paintings. I have a whole new series coming out. And they're actually going to be very large paintings um, because I actually want to paint all the engines larger than life and I'm, I'm ha I, I have a few paintings that I've shown here that have gotten wonderful response I'm also working directly with Lionel on quite a few licensed products okay that are that will be available either through um, Lionel you know, their website right or um, at your local dealer whoever yeah. you deal with but there's going to be um, art my artwork will be on puzzles on flags on ornaments on quite a few different products so I'm really excited about that. Do you Very. ever have any idea or any inkling that when you started this here, we mm. would be almost no. 25 years later? It's and actually next year will be my 25th anniversary. And to commemorate that, I, I am going to be coming out with a coffee table book with um, most of my paintings in, in it because so many people now have asked me, do you have a book? Do you have a book with your paintings? And mm. I thought this was this was perfect timing and now i have more than enough paintings to put in a book <laughs> very very cool and we're i'm excited to see the book i need i yeah. need an, i need a new book for the coffee table <laughs> i told you before you're the only thing my wife will let outside of the basement that's train related and and i think i speak for a lot of people when when we say thank you for creating such amazing artwork that reflects the spirit of this hobby so well and uh, thank you for being such an important part of the LCCA and supporting the clubs in the way that you do and, and we're just really excited about this 45th anniversary painting and and excited that everybody has a chance to win it and so 
I just want to check with Al real quick. Raffle tickets are going to be available all year at different LCCA events. If if people aren't planning on coming to LCCA events, which they should plan on doing, will raffle tickets be available through the website as well, or do you have to get it at an event? Well, that, that's our plan. We don't have it established yet, but our goal would be to be able to have our members. It is limited to LCCA members only, so if you're not a member, please consider joining the club. You can join online, www.lionelcollectors.org and then hopefully we can um, get, get it established so you can order online your tickets. So again, you know, to me, that's another benefit of belonging to the LCCA. Uh, people that come to the convention have an opportunity to meet with people, such wonderful people, such as Angela and Bob Thomas. Thank Just, you. Thank you. Yeah. It, it, friends through it, the years. It goes both ways. I would not be doing this for 25 years if I wasn't if my art was not so well received and you guys have not been so supportive. So I'm very grateful for all the years. Well, we're glad to have you around. And now back in the driver's seat to continue our discussion of the final night at the LCCA convention, Al Colas. Welcome back to your rightful chair. Well, thank you, Derek. <laughs> Let's talk about the big announcement yesterday, and that is the LCCA LRRC merger. And and here's we posted the news story on the O Gauge Railroading Forum yesterday, and it has been very well received as of this morning. Everybody seems to think this is a good idea. Let's talk a little bit more about the details of exactly what's happening and, and the plans moving forward here. Okay. Well, um, uh, first of all, I would like to um, address all the current. Lionel Railroad Club members. Uh, please don't be afraid. Uh, we went into this discussions with Lionel and Lionel was very concerned and wanted to make uh, a concerted effort to uh, make sure that the Lionel Railroad Club received more and, it, and the intention is to make their club better and make enhance the experience and provide more value. Um, it's flattering to us that Lionel recognized what the LCCA has been doing in the past se past several years. Um, you know, we have always had a great relationship, but this this relationship now will allow us to work closer with Lionel, do more fun special events, just the 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 more collaborative effort where where things will be posted on maybe more of our our websites, uh, the video work, the special events. It's just going to be a, a win win situation. The Lionel Railroad Club members will receive more for their, um, their membership. The LCCA members will um, receive more. They'll be receive the 10% discount on all, off the purchase of all the things on Lionel Lines, our Lionel uh, website. So our LCCA members will benefit from it as well. It's, it's something that is, it's a very significant event uh, for us. And uh, we want to make sure that we, we do, it, do it well. And uh, I'll any LRC member, if they have any questions or concerns, you know, please call me, send me an email. Uh, my cell phone number is 248-709-4137, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart. My email address is agkolis at comcast.net. Uh, we're here to, to make, it, make it even better. So uh, I don't think some of our members even recognize the significance of this. It's, it's a big deal. It, it really is a big deal. And, you know, and it really... You know, I've heard the comment, well, is this a takeover? No, this really is a merger, you know, and, and I think I think that, you know, it really is upsides for, for everybody. You know, the LRC members are going to be taken care of in a way that they haven't been for a long time. And that's not anybody's fault. You know, as Howard said sure. yesterday, Lionel could only dedicate so many resources, so many places to put out, you know, to, to do so many things. And, and unfortunately, the LRC just kind of was at the bottom of the stack. So the level of service that the LRC members are about to start receiving is really, it's really going to be, be a nice increase. Um, you know, the LCCA takes care of its members, you know, and I mean, Al has given out his phone number and it really is his phone number numerous times on this podcast before. And I will give you the standard disclaimer that I have given on every podcast. Please don't call Al in the middle of the night because he really will pick up the phone and Gina, his wife, really will get hostile at you. <laughs> Please don't call Al in the middle of the night. But if you genuinely have a question, a concern, this man is here to take care of you, and uh, it's all he will take care of people to a fault. I mean, Al, Al just gives and gives and gives until Al can't give any more, and and sometimes that can be a little dangerous. But uh, you know, I I think it's important that we talk about this for a few minutes and just kind of clear some things up. 
things aren't set in stone yet. I think yes. I think people need to understand that that this is not a 100% clear picture. But you guys felt it was necessary to make the announcement now while we're here in Indianapolis. You guys are still working on things, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, I, I appeal to people to have some patience. Um, you know, Lionel wants to communicate with, with all of the Lionel Railroad Club members. They sent out a mass email yesterday to everybody that they had email addresses to, but they don't have everybody's email address, unfortunately. That's the way it is. So, you know, again, I'm, I want to reach out to those members. I want to welcome those members. And... We are all about having fun. As as you heard this week, uh, things get a little bit crazy, but they're, they're toys. This is a hobby. This is fun. Yeah. And uh, that's what it's all about. That's why we have the interest today. And, again, we're, we're working on the details. Lionel really wants to communicate. Um, all the members will be receiving a packet. I just don't know when. And there's going to be uh, additional explanations. Uh, we're going to... We plan on continuing to provide some very unique product. I know that's important to some of the Railroad Club members. So, um, yes, all the L RRC members will become LCCA members. It's just a question of when the databases and everything and the, uh, and the information can be transferred over in a, in a uh, controlled controlled manner. Okay. So um, I'm thinking that, you know, we're probably in the October time period that we'll okay. be able to have some, some mailings. Sure. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, we had a situation where our, our publisher, our editor of our club publication, uh, Mike Motler, who's done an outstanding job, um, has uh, resigned for personal reasons that are medically related. Mm -hmm. So right now we're just at a, a little bit of a temporary um, uh, quandary. Or, you know, we, sure. we, we'll have other people that are stepping up, but it might take us a little bit longer to be able to develop the, the, the necessary communication. Right. So, again, that's why I, I do want people, if they do have concerns, we want everybody that's in the Railroader Club that's not in the LCCA today to, to come into the club, continue on with the membership next year, and to continue to grow and, and have a great time and, and a great experience. Um, you know, we, we're not doing this for the intentions that, okay, uh, it's going to be Railroader Club, you know, join the LCCA for year one year, and then they discontinue it. That, that to me that would be uh, a failure for us that sure. means that we didn't do something right because we we want to welcome and encourage um, all the LRC's members involvement everything you see in our club publications is written by members for members we want members to get involved attend special events host special events um, write articles post on Facebook post on our, our, our website that's what we want to encourage so Bear with us. Have some patience. Um, we will get. We will take care of this. We will do it right, and I promise you, uh, you'll have a great time. One of the things I want to say is, as a young guy and coming out of the generation that I come out of, my generation doesn't necessarily believe in clubs. You guys changed that for me. You know, when when we met about two years ago, um, I didn't have any interest in being a part of a train club. Why? Why? You know, and the relationship that I've developed with you guys. I really feel like the LRRC members are really about to be served in a way that they probably haven't been served in a long time because this club really is a lot of fun. And if you enjoy toy trains, you know, it's it's going to be a phenomenal time for you. So just, yeah, like I said, hang tight. You know, we'll, we'll get our ducks in a row here. Right. Sounds like by York and, and we should be in good shape. Speaking of, go no, ahead, go I, ahead. I was just going to say, again, Derek, we're all in the same situation. You know, I had plenty of friends. I had a life before I got involved with the LCCA, and I've met so many wonderful people. Uh, my sons have been coming to the convention. Vincent, who's the junior membership coordinator, he was three months old at his first convention in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, he's here. He does. It, he's 18 years old now. The trains are not that important to him. He's into cars and, and uh, um, girls, but he's here because of the people. And, and he's grown up with these people, you know, like Angela, we'll, we'll, we'll get together at different times of the year at special events or at York, and we get together and we just laugh and we have fun. And, and it's almost like the trains become secondary. But again, I don't want to make it sound, and I don't want to, you know, dismiss or alienate the, 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 the core collectors. That's what's great about this hobby. Whatever way you enjoy it, if you're a private person and you just want to receive the pub, club publications, and you, or you just want to buy product, and that's your enjoyment level, 
that's fine. Right. That's great. You know, that's, you know, I don't want to turn people off just because, hey, you know, who are these crazy people that are laughing and having a good time all the time? I don't want to be a part of that. That's okay. Um, if you want to just be a member and, and to be able to buy product, that's, and then that's enjoyable to you, that's great. That's what's wonderful about this hobby. You know, collectors, operators, different gauges, different, you know, eras, variations, you know, whatever it is that you're into, that's, it's a personal experience, and that's what we want to do. We want to provide the opportunity to have, to, for people to have a personal experience with the club and a level that they're comfortable with. Right. Let's, dare I say it, start looking ahead. It's, it's hard to believe. Banquet's tonight, so that's the big, the big hurrah at the end yes. of the party. Yes. Um, and then we start looking at Boston. Uh, well, first, we need to get a good night's sleep, <laughs> a couple of good <laughs> nights sleep. Um, as you know, sleep is a shortage here. Yes. Uh, we, well, we yeah. go, we're going on vapors. It just, you just kind of feed off each other. you got to keep moving, and you're just you're, you're meeting people in the hallways. People are going back and forth. We had a great experience where we had a uh, TV coverage today. Yes, that is good. You know, that's, so that's something. So we're, again, promoting the hobby, promoting the club. Um, our relationship with Lionel is phenomenal. We're going to have a, a banquet tonight. Uh, we just had a, a, a toy train show swap meet in the hall. Mm -hmm. And um, again, vendors from our people, members from all over the country brought in their product and sold it to members and shared it with other people. We had the, the public traffic, tra it was open to the public today. We had some thunderstorms in the area. And uh, so, you know, there were some things that are beyond our control. But, uh, you know, the LCCA made a concerted effort. Uh, we, we appreciate all the people coming in from all over the country to uh, to buy and sell trains. Uh, Lionel's layouts here, TW Trainworks bought their modular layouts. Just really wowed people people all week long. Uh, you know, the Quad City um, high railers out of uh, out of Cincinnati, Ohio, where came, came in and brought their I don't know the exact dimensions, but it was like 58 by 38 or something. It was huge. It's a huge layout. Yeah, I mean, we're not joking when we say it's a huge layout. Right. And so this is, you know, again, this is something when people come to our convention, they get an opportunity to see the trains, play the trains. And we talked about it all week long, but it's interactive. The, 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 the kids and the adults are given the, the LC, um, the Lionel Legacy controllers or their Lion Chief controllers or the Lion Chief Plus. They put them in their hands and they run them. They experience them. Some of the older people, I think, are, are, are hesitant to, to, to touch them. You know, the, the, the children that grow up with, you know, cell phones and remote controls and everything, it's a piece of cake for them. It's it's very intuitive, so it's 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 a, it's a hands-on experience. We've had um, Lionel Little Lions on the floor for the littlest kids. We've had then the Lion Chief Plus sets set up, and then we had the Transformer operated controlled engine sets and the Legacy. So we have all different levels of of interest. But the pinnacle of the event is our our uh, banquet Saturday night banquet. Everybody's going to walk away with a Lionel or LCCA Lionel product uh, it's uh, it's a tremendous opportunity for to where people get a little more it's a little more formal a little more dressed up sure. the wives um, get out to have an evening where you have a good good meal and a nice more of a classy affair kind of thing as opposed to a casual uh, sure. thing sure but uh, you know we're excited we want to thank all the members and everybody for coming obviously thank you Derek uh, for not six being here every day it's been a good week it's it's been a really good week and uh, you know it's nice to have you in the backyard and guess what the intention is we're gonna figure out a way to do this from Boston next year well I'm hoping before that time Derek. well yes you and I will get together well before that and we'll have Al back on the show um, I'm pl we're planning the LCC is planning to try to maintain a presence here in Indianapolis I'm sure we'll be with mr. muffin um, we're trying to do different things. We may, we may do another, some other tours that we're going to try to do on a regular. Some, we're just talking about it right now, so I don't want to go to that. But the point is, we want to be part of the the Indianapolis area community. Uh, we're involved with uh, the Make a Wish Foundation, the local Autism Society of Indianapolis, or Indiana, excuse me. Um, so we're going to be doing more things in the area. Mr. Muffins, as you know, it's a kind of phenomenal layout. Sure, he has. Uh, uh, again, say, shares that same philosophy. It's hands-on, kid-friendly. They get what 150 there, 150 people there on a Saturday morning yeah. playing trains. It's crazy. It's, it, really, it's it really, is. It's crazy. It really is. <laughs> it really is. 
Well, I tell you what, like I said, it's been a great week. I think we'll kind of wrap it up with that, and we'll start thinking ahead and towards Boston in 2015, and I can't believe I'm saying that, but it's going to be here before we know it. Al, it's been a great week, and we still have a little bit more show to go. You're going to hear from Mike Phillips from Lionel, who is in their marketing department here in just a minute. But, Al, I think this is where we sign off for oh, the week. No, I'm sad. I know. It's, it's been a great week again. Thank you so much. And, uh, and we were robbed. We were robbed. We want a rematch. There we go again. <laughs> well, we'll find out whether or not the LCCA gets robbed again in 2015 as the LCCA National Convention goes to Boston, Massachusetts. Until then, we will see you all in Boston. You're listening to Notch 6 at the LCCA National Convention in Indianapolis, Indiana. It's the Notch 6 online podcast. Welcome back to the show. We're going to wrap this convention up in style. One of my uh, dear friends, somebody who I like to talk to all the time, and really he's the guy that that drives a lot of the marketing behind Lionel. His name is Mike Phillips. You heard him here last year. This is a guy you need to know. Mike, welcome back to the show. It's good to see you again. Thanks, Derek. Good to see you, too. Excited to be here, and uh, always fun to be a part of a Notch 6 podcast. Well, thank you. I, uh, we try to have a little bit of fun when we do these things, and I tell you what, uh, Mike and I are, are two of the uh, the younger folks in this industry, and it's so nice to have somebody that, that you know, we can, we can sit around and, and just joke around about stuff, and that's what's exciting about Lionel right now, is there is a lot of fresh young blood in this company right now, and we're going to talk to Howard a little bit. Actually, we did talk to Howard about it. There's a lot of energy inside this company right now and uh, that's got to be exciting for you to be a part of a team that's that's relatively young it's you know it's an honor it's really exciting to be a part of something that's uh, been around for 114 years and you know you're carrying the torch of something that's so iconic and it's so passionate and the best part is when you talk to different consumers how much they love the product they love the brand it's hard to not be excited about something and then too you know at the end of the day we get to make trains. We get to play with toys. You know, I, I get paid to play with toys. So it's a dream job. So it's, it's pretty amazing that, uh, you know, according to, uh, I have two sons and uh, three and one in their eyes, I'm a hero. And uh, daddy plays all day long. So they haven't figured that part out yet, but daddy plays for a living. So it's, uh, it's pretty exciting. And uh, like you're mentioning, we um, do a lot of things, make a lot of changes and uh, digital, new products and uh, new videos, new content, new iPad apps and things. So Lots of things changing, lots of new pieces that we're trying to do and implement with the brand, so it's a pretty exciting time. Very cool. And what Mike is primarily responsible for, a lot of these neat licensed products that you see, uh, the Frosty the Snowman set that's in the new catalog, uh, things like that, the Crayola set, uh, things things that kind of reach outside of the world of traditional Lionel. Mike's the guy that goes out and puts that together, and then Mike really uh, looks at how you get Lionel into the rest of the mainstream world. That's what Mike is really good at, and that's what's been neat to watch is that Mike's background is, is you know, managing these large brands and these large products, and, and to watch Mike come in and start working with Lionel and figure out, with a fresh set of eyes, and figure out how do we take Lionel and how do we make Lionel relevant to the rest of the world. Give uh, the listeners, you know, an idea of some of the projects that you've worked on this year that that really reach outside of the traditional world of Lionel. Yeah, so some of the things that we're looking at is um, over the course of the past year, we've um, trying to get new consumers into the hobby. We've launched a new digital app called Battle Train. So that's been going great. It's a lot of fun. It's completely out of the norm for Lionel. It's a uh, digital offering only. So that's been a lot of fun and a new initiative to get people into the hobby. Also getting new licenses. Uh, one of the things you had mentioned, we uh, recently signed Frosty the Snowman. Mm -hmm. We've also added some new product for Coca-Cola, new product for John Deere. Um, looking at a couple different items, the, uh, one of our more exciting ones that we've added that we're all pretty passionate about is Batman. Batman's a new one this year, and uh, you know one of the things we thought that was going to be totally new people to the hobby and grab people, uh, what I've loved to see is that we have the sets on display here, and a lot of the current hobbyists are uh, excited about it, love it, see the graphics, see the decoration, and it's kind of become one of those must-have sets yeah. that uh, they feel like they got to have it. So it's it's really cool. It's exciting. They get to take something like that, bring Batman to life through a product that we kind of already have in place, but change it, modify it, bring in some unique sounds, but then also use Batman to introduce Lionel Trains to new consumers, new channels. Well, you know, sure. getting on Batman's page, getting on Polar Express's Facebook page, a lot of those things to... Uh, introduce those consumers to our products and to our uh, you know, excitement in the hobby of trains. Very cool. Let's talk about getting new consumers into the hobby. It's it's something that, that you know this hobby as a whole we're passionate about and trying to find this magic formula to make it happen is, is a challenge. It's you know it's 
a lot of people sit around and chatter about it in the hobby, but for you guys, I mean, it's it's your livelihood that that's at stake. You know, the the better Lionel does, the better as, as a whole the hobby does. And so, how do you guys approach bringing kids into the hobby? What avenues are you guys exploring to bring new folks in besides Batman and, and licensing? Yeah, it's a great piece. You know, one of the things we're looking at is uh, it is a huge challenge. It's a big battle. How do we bring these new individuals in? So it's um, looking at things we haven't done in the past, completely new events, new locations where you have a lot of young families, a lot of young kids, um, changing up how we activated events. Some of the things we're doing is, you know, typically trains used to be more of look, don't touch. Now you come to a Lionel train event and we have little stations that we call play tables. And we set the product out and we encourage kids to come up and uh, play with it. We have it up all day long. And uh, it's amazing, you know, from 30, 40, 50 yards away, you see a kid look and he sees Thomas or he sees Polar Express and the light goes off and the fact that he can run down and play with it, it's amazing. You kind of come back from these things like more excited and more passionate about what you're doing because you know things are working. Um, so with changing events, changing um, locations that we go to, we're also looking at educating the consumer in a different way. You know, some of the things, we have a lot of real estate on our packaging and oftentimes it used to be blank. So if you look at the back of a Line Chief Plus box or a Line Chief box, one of the things we're doing is using all that real estate to say, if you buy this, you can also create additional loops, have turnouts. You can, oh, here's different pieces of track, different accessories that you can kind of have with it. So really ways to expand your fun, making sure that people know that, you know, so they can kind of take the hobby, grow with it, and create a really clear and easy roadmap for how to do that, to take away the hurdle of, you know, being be the confusion or the not really, you know, the concern of how to grow and expand it, um, just simplifying it, that it's really fun. It's an easy hobby, and the more you get into it, the more you grow with it, you kind of get hooked, and you become more passionate about it. Very cool, and you're talking about the PlayStations, and, and I helped you guys put them together on Monday, and what a great idea, and it's it's a different approach to things. These, these tables are about knee high. They're right at, you know, a kid's eye level, and how cool is it that, you know, you can have kids come in and just pick up the remotes and go. It's not, you know, it used to be the trains were specifically on the display layout or on the tower, and now there is there's centers for these kids where they can run up and get engaged with the product. And how cool is that? That that's how we're thinking about it now. It's not just about showcasing the trains. It's about engagement, and it's neat to see that. Is that what you guys are aiming for? One hundred percent, spot on. You know, I think uh, getting the product in a kid's hands is the first step you know one finding them and then getting the product in their hand it's, it's just amazing and once they have that connection you know especially with our line chief remotes having them be mobile and the kids get around the table and they're just shoulder to shoulder and they pass the remote from one to the next it's uh it's amazing they have that connection and that passion that excitement and these tables and other things that we're doing it's all about um letting them use a the product you know we want you to have fun it's all about a toy you know at the end of the day we're playing with trains so we want to provide that opportunity and that experience for all these kids absolutely you you said the word digital and that got me thinking about how lionel is engaging in the digital world there have been a lot of changes to lionel and cyberspace within really really the last probably 15 to 18 months we've seen a lot of changes tell me about how lionel is engaging with folks out on the internet yeah, well, so we're doing a couple different things. The, um, you know, it's this day and age, you got to be digital. There's a lot of different things you have to go to. So we really have two groups of consumers that we're speaking with. We, you know, we have a lot of our core current hobbyists. So some of the things that we're doing for these individuals would be an app that we launched called the Layout Control System. So we have this, and this is really a way to enhance and expand on what you're doing with Legacy. So it's a really fun addition. So it's bringing additional new digital technological offerings to these individuals. But then we also want to get in front of new consumers. So part of that is different things like Battle Train, that's a digital app that's out on iTunes, or we also have a new site called Lionel Tracks. And Lionel Tracks is everything trains. You know, so the best part is, it's really, really fun, engaging content that consumers who are really not even train fans or don't even realize they're train fans, but at the end of the day, it's, trains are pretty iconic, they're pretty exciting. There's a little bit of a romance to them that, you know, historically as people rode more trains and it was part of our culture and part of what made America where we are today, that um, it's pretty exciting. So you see a lot of fun content tied to the Lionel Tracks. It's a uh, really unique site that we're changing and trying to do some different things. And I think the web address on that is tracks.lionel.com. Is that right? That's correct. Very good. And there, there really is some cool content on Tracks. It's not just Lionel developed content. 
Lionel is bringing content from all over the web into tracks. I mean, and, and one of the cool things I remember, you know, just seeing uh, within the last few weeks is uh, about a subway train in New York that is a vacuum. You don't even think about all of the litter and stuff that, that goes through the New York subway system. And, and I hop on Lionel Tracks, and there's this great video and well-written piece about this vacuum train that goes through the subway in New York and, and cleans up all the trash. And, you know, as, as a rail fan and as a toy train enthusiast, you think you have a pretty good grasp of, of everything that's out there. But this site, you know, provides a lot of content from some of the, the farther reaches of, of the train world, so to speak. And so there really is a lot of, of great content. There's a, there's a great opportunity. Even if you think you're, you're an experienced rail fan, you need to check out Lionel Tracks. And, and my guess is you're going to learn something your first visit to the site. And like I said, uh, it's neat to see you guys take the initiative to to foster the interest even farther with sites like this that that you guys are, are working not only with the core hobbyists, but you're, you're bringing people who may not even know that they have an interest in trains and saying, hey, this is what's out there. Check it out. It's very, very cool. Um, one of the things that, that – Howard and I have talked about and and you guys are very passionate about is the fact that Lionel owns Christmas. You guys have done a lot with the Christmas line in in the past year. What's new there that people need to be excited about? You know, it's Lionel's been synonymous with Christmas for years. So one of the things that we launched last year was all about a new holiday traditions line and it's ornaments, tree skirts, floor mats, you know, everything you could think of when you're in your home, you know, really Lionel is associated with everything under the tree, around the tree, in your home. And so we've had a lot of fun, you know, and our employees, you know, it's nice because you have your own test group and your own market research team that you kind of make different products. And as soon as everybody there wants it, that's when you know you've got a good one and a different winner. So a lot of new ornaments, a lot of new items, different things that are Lionel specific, Lionel and Polar Express, different ones, um, really ways to kind of just bring the Lionel tradition through your home and kind of share it off and on the track. Very nice. Let's talk, let's look ahead for a little bit. What are some of your goals for the next year? What do you want to accomplish within the company that you can talk about? You know, for our goals internally, it's a clear roadmap of where we're going. Um, really kind of having that organization and clarity and have a pretty solid vision. You know, so one of the things we've looked at is what are we going to make, what's been resonating, and how do we continue to bring the right product to the right consumer. The, um, another big goal that we're looking at is educating individuals. So you're going to see a lot more video. Different cool. offerings, way to engage with the product, and then really ways to make sure that they know they have they bought the right item and they know how to use it. So you're going to see a lot of different videos. Also, as we go through there, if you go to lionel.com, some of the things you're looking at is you know you might see a new site in a year or so that uh, kind of really making that more of a digital location for people to go to, and everything trains where they can have a better experience and really just learn how to have fun with what they purchased and or just trains in general. So you're going to see a lot of content there. So. It's educating consumers, it's getting product in front of them, letting them have that one-on-one -on -one experience, and it's really a clarity of roadmap, where we're going to go and what we're going to make. I think if we can kind of get that front right there, it's going to help us connect with clubs in a different way, connect with consumers, and really expand the brand to new levels. Let's talk about video for a second. I think that's an interesting component to this whole thing. Um, Lionel Engineering has their own YouTube channel now. Lionel Service has their own YouTube channel. Lionel as a whole has its own YouTube channel. Um, you know, it's been interesting to watch. Uh, you see you see outside YouTube channels like uh, Eric's Trains garner some really large viewership numbers, and clearly Lionel has looked at that and said, what a great way to engage with the consumer. You know, how do you guys view the future of that? Is is that the best way to to interact or, or what do you what do you guys see the the role of video for Lionel I think the role of video is going to be huge for us I think it does two things if you go out to YouTube it's massive people want content you know and if you go to Facebook it's videos and it's pictures that are the most clicked through and engaged with content so um, content's king and for us it's uh, not only a chance to engage and educate consumers it's really a way to drive additional brand awareness that we have content that's going to be out there so whether it's going to be on a Batman set for people to kind of know that we exist and see that it's around and kind of see, really bring the product to life. You know, one of the nice things is that our product does, it is mobile. It does have sound. So really kind of to, a picture in a catalog is really nice, but the video is the way for us to truly help bring it to life and kind of sell it. And so, you know, maybe in the future with our catalogs as they're digital, you might see on the digital versions, videos embedded in. 
that people can kind of engage with, you know, kind of more of like online magazines and things like that to really take this video and bring it to life to consumers in a larger way. And YouTube right now is really one of the greatest ways. And um, what you'll see is probably us starting to consolidate all of our content and really getting the Lionel channel as the main one and kind of driving all the consumers to that one location and um, leveraging our content in a larger way, uh, making it easier for people to find, um, sharing it with more groups. You know, it used to be, you always wanted to kind of hold on to it and have people come to your page. Now we want to share that content. Yeah, about a week ago we launched a sensor track video and it's been great to see everybody in the trade between different publications, different clubs, a lot of different groups putting it up on forums. Um, so I sent out the link in the video and it's great to see people engaging with it. And I think our consumers are hungry for the content and making sure that we provide the right content and um, give them the right access to be able to use it. Something that you mentioned earlier that I think is worth circling back to talk about is Lionel engaging with folks in non-traditional settings. As you guys start to look at some of those places where you wouldn't traditionally see Lionel, what kind of opportunities are you looking at? Uh, places that people wouldn't normally think of outside of their local hobby shop. You know, we've looked at uh, a lot of different things. The um, some of the different ones, it's always kind of fun. It seems like uh, everything always circles back from where it was in the past. You know, as we kind of look at events and where we should go, uh, people toss out state fairs. You know, you have a lot of people in one location and you can kind of do a pop-up booth where you would just set it up and let people kind of play with it, engage with it, and hand out pamphlets and information to really drive people back to a local dealer and let them buy the product there, but just introduce it to them and let them have that experience. So, you know, different things like state fairs, um, maybe you kind of do a pop-up in something like a Mall of America you have a lot of traffic in a location like that where we could just kind of set it up and oftentimes people walk by and they get they get so excited when they see the circle L. It's really nice. It's that badge, it's that brand mark for us and um, them kind of knowing that uh, the brand is still around and then coming over and seeing the products that we have whether it be their connection would be through a new license if it's Batman, if it's Coca-Cola. So it's having new licenses and a new locations to really kind of help us gain that awareness and that traction. You've been listening to Mike Phillips, Vice President of Marketing for Lionel Trains. Look for Lionel out in uh, locations where you wouldn't normally see them coming very soon. And also make sure you check out Lionel on Facebook, Lionel Tracks website, and Lionel.com, which I think Mike dropped a pretty good hint about uh, new content coming there and a new look for the Lionel site. Hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> Keep your eyes open for that, guys. Thanks so much, Mike, for your time. We appreciate it. Thanks for listening to Notch 6, the only podcast dedicated to O-Gauge trains. You can find every episode on our website, Notch6.com, or on iTunes and Stitcher. We'll see you again soon. Until then, be sure to keep it in Notch 6. The following has been a production of Notch 6 Media and is intended for private use only. This show may not be copied or redistributed without express written consent. This show copyright 2014, all rights reserved.